Welcome in to Yes We Can Outdoors. My name is Mike Bland and today we're going to go over Outdoor Vital Oblivion sleeping pad that I've now used on three separate trips. As you've probably noticed in my videos, I have been a big fan of the Big Agnes Q Core Deluxe and the Nemo Tensor, but uh, there's something special about this pad. I'm going to go over the pros and the cons of this pad, but before we get into that, so this is a 3.5 R value and that's ASTM tested. It's just a standardized test that they do on pads to give you, the sleeper, and the companies a way to find a way to uh, pretty much relay information of how warm that sleeping pad will be. Very similar, similar to a sleeping bag. The lower the, the level of heat, the warmer the, the bag's gonna be. If you have a 50 degree pad, uh, sleeping bag, and you have a 10 degree sleeping bag, well that sleeping bag at 10 degrees should keep you much warmer than that 50 degree bag. Kind of same concept with your sleeping pad, okay? So keep that in mind. Normally, they'll be rated anywhere from a scale from one all the way to about seven, okay? One being not resisting heat a lot, meaning you'll be colder, or it's not gonna trap your heat as much, and a seven meaning it's gonna be an extremely warm pad. So finding that balance is key because the thicker the pad, the more R value, generally speaking, you're gonna have much more weight. So understanding your body, how much weight do you, how much weight how much weight do you put off? <laughs> how much warmth are you a are you a warm body person a lot? Can you do you sleep cold? Do you sleep warm? Okay, so there's not a single answer for everybody. My pads will not always work for every every one of you guys as a viewer, and vice versa. Okay. So before we jump in and get started, hit that bell notification, please. You're gonna hit the thumbs up button just cause you like me, I hope. And make sure if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel and we'll get right into this right now. All right guys, welcome back. And let's just dive in. All right, let's just dive into this thing. So. Um, it is a two-piece nozzle, which is really cool. So you can blow in or it comes with a, a blow-up um, bag in one end and it has a little um, deflating nozzle here, meaning you can blow it up all the way and just release a little bit of air without depleting the whole thing. And you can just sh shut that and then go to sleep. And then when you're done with it, you can actually lift up the other back part of that nozzle, open up the back part of that cap and it will release all the air and fold up nicely like you saw previously. All right, before we get started, let me give a little bit of uh, my opinion on sleeping pads. So I'm 40, um, I can definitely feel my body being a little bit more achy and good sleep for me isn't a bonus. It's truly part of my backpacking experience. I like a really good, healthy um, pad, a healthy sleeping bag, a nice pillow and I can get some really good adequate sleep because mind alertness is important to me. I want to make sure I can get off the trail, do things on the trail without uh, without my mind being foggy. So good adequate sleep I think is very, very important to make sure you get home to your loved ones. But at the same time, like I just want to lay down and just be comfortable after the hard work of getting to where I'm going. So that's key. So finding a good sleeping pad is important. Now. I've shared this on other videos, but I'm gonna say it again. I am not a back sleeper. I'm not a, I'm not a side sleeper. I'm not a stomach sleeper. I am like all over sleeper. Generally though, I'm, I spend probably 75% of my time on my side and then the other kind either on my back or on my stomach. So for me, a thick pad is really key because if you have a thin pad, when you're laying on your side, that's just gonna drive through the pad and on the ground, okay? so. For me, I try to stay about a three inch pad, which this is, this is three inches. And um, I try to find a balance of affordability, something that doesn't weigh like through the roof, that has a, a good healthy balance of weight. And then obviously uh, a big part of that is comfort. So we're gonna get uh, through all of those of why um, I bought this pad, how I like this pad. We'll go over some pros and we'll go over some cons and a little bit about the technology of this pad. Okay, so for technology, this really has like three layers of a heat component that will keep you nice and warm. Generally speaking, at a 3.5 R value pad, you'd be looking at a three season pad, but um, there's three layers of insulation, so to speak, that uh, really separates this pad, I think, than some of the other pads. 
So um, let's get into that. Okay, inside there is a polyester filament insulation. And what's interesting is when you blow up this pad, if you actually look inside, you can actually see that kind of film layer inside. And as it's blowing up, it's sticking to the top of the pad and it's sticking to the bottom of the pad. So you're really creating extra um, insulation on the pad. On top of that, there's a film layer foil kind of stuff inside. What that's gonna do is radiate your heat back up to you while keeping the cold ground, um, cold weather below you so it doesn't really you know, enter your body and get you that nice chilly feeling that we all love so much. Um, so on that topic as well, um, that's really what a sleeping pad really does. You can have the nice little sleeping bag, you can have a, a a 10 degree sleeping bag, but if you don't have a proper sleeping pad, that cold air drift is gonna seep right through your sleeping bag because when you're laying on your sleeping pad, whether it's a down or a, or a, a synthetic or a blend, you're squishing all that down onto the ground and it's thinning itself out. So most of your heat is actually created from your pad when you're laying down on the pad on the ground. So this will actually reflect your heat and if you don't have this, then what you're doing is you're exposing your body to that cold temperatures coming up through the ground and into your body, which isn't gonna keep you warm. And the third piece of technology is this, kind of like this, this uh, reflecting coating on top of it. I don't know if you can see it, I'm pretty sure you can. It has this reflective coating. And what's supposed to happen with this reflective coating, it's supposed to bounce your heat off of the reflective coating and back in your body, creating a third layer of technology to keep your body warm. So that's what I was really pleasantly surprised when I found out it's only a 3.5 R value rating. Um, so I think there's some additional uh, benefits to this pad when it comes to that rating. Um, I've seen Justin Outdoors take this in the snow with Brigham and Taysom uh, on a trip together. You can go check out his video too. And he does a really good job of kind of explaining and you get to see firsthand what his thoughts are with uh, Taysom and Brigham off in the distance while he's talking about their product right in front of the camera and giving you real, uh, his real and true opinion. So um, it, this is, the, so far, it, this technology as far as warmth, I can definitely test that. But here's another key thing too, I think might be a little interesting is, um, I don't use a sleeping bag, I use a sleeping quilt. So what I think happens is, my this is radiating right into my body immediately because I don't have anything under me. I don't have a sleeping bag under my body. So I'm not, I haven't tried this with the sleeping bag. It's always been 100% with my sleeping quilt. I have the Storm Loft 15, which is a 15 degree bag. Um, and the straps just kind of go around uh, the pad itself. And um, no air drifts come in and it just, you know, keeps them nice and warm. Okay, so uh, as far as the coating, it's made with 20 denier nylon, um, which is, Plenty sturdy for a sleeping pad. Okay, they're gonna have two sizes. We have a regular size, um, which will come in 72 inches in length and 21 inches in width. So they don't have just a wide version. You gotta get the wide and the long. So with that, it's 76 inches in length, which is plenty for me. I'm five foot eight, so it's plenty of length. And then the width's gonna come in at 25 inches. The reason why I went with the larger pad is because I wanted that extra four inches so my elbows don't hang off you know, the side of my pad. And when you have a sleeping quilt, um, I've definitely noticed that the, the change or the difference because on my other pad, it is not 25 inches, I'm at 20 inches. So that extra room creates extra heat for my elbows when I'm you know, laying on my back when I am or if I'm laying on my side, just that extra um, protects the air drifts too from getting it. So with this uh, thickness is three inches, so it's nice and thick. So if you're a side sleeper, you won't have any problems um, laying shoulders down. I actually was reading through uh, the reviews and I saw a gentleman, I'm assuming it's a gentleman on the comments, he said he was 275 pounds. So I think that is really important um, that people leave accurate uh, reviews of the product. So feel free to always go check out reviews of products um, before you buy and just kind of get a comparison of everyone. Sometimes you can find your body structure or body type and kind of get a, an understanding. One of the other things too um, I want to mention on the technology is the distribution of weight. Um, so see there's, there's these ripples through the pad. Nice big ripples. But in between you have these little uh, indents. 
and these little indents they call eye beam cushions. So that helps distribute the weight um, when you're moving around or your body is adjusting the weight on the pad. And again, it kind of helps with keeping uh, you off the ground with that technology. Okay, so let's talk about a, a few pros that I really like about this pad. One of the main pros for me was it was under $115. And if you're a person that's on a budget or you're looking for a budget pad, maybe you don't backpack a lot. I did eight trips last year. I plan on doing that many this year. So for me, uh, budget is important, but I'm out in the backcountry a lot. So um, I don't mind spending a couple extra bucks for added comfort. But if you're a reviewer and you're looking for a budget, instead of spending 50, 60, 70 bucks on a pad that you don't even know if it'll work, let's say on Amazon, pay a couple extra bucks maybe, and go look at a pad maybe around 115, try to find a pad on sale. But for 115, at 3.5 R value on a three season pad, that's a pretty good price point for a pad like this. Another pro for me as well has been all the technology that was put into this pad. The great thing about um, Outdoor Vitals, and you guys may go, Mike, you're a fanboy of Outdoor Vitals. It's not that I'm a fanboy, it's that uh, Taysom and Brigham are outdoor enthusiasts themselves. So they know what they're looking for themselves to, to correlate into a product to put out there for guys and girls like you and I that are out in the backcountry. But for the weight to get this sort of R value um, and the baffles on the pad, the comfort of this pad, the distribution of my weight of this pad has been really, really awesome for me. Um, I think it's definitely up there when it comes to comfort. Another pro to me is the quality. A 20 denier nylon, um, you can actually feel the quality in this pad. Sometimes you feel things like, does that doesn't really feel like it's gonna be, uh, the quality is gonna be there, but this truly feels like the quality is there, and it truly is so far. Um, I generally bring my Thermarest um, for multitude of reasons, uh, which I won't get into in this video, um, but that does protect it on the bottom too. Um, but it does feel like, you know, it's, it's very good quality to be honest, just the feel of it, um, the texture of it, and uh, just all the components of how it can help with heat. For me, I wanna be warm when I'm sleeping. I don't wanna be chilly or cold. So for me, those are some of the top reasons why I like this quilt and they're my top pros. Let's talk about some of the cons of this pad. Uh, it is not, the lightest pad on the market by any means. You can find a lot more pads that are much, much lighter than this. So this comes in just under 30 ounces, which is probably a little on the heavier side. That's about 1.88 pounds. So if you're looking for a pad that uh, you need really light base weight, you'll be taking up a lot of that weight with this pad. There are, I, I think I heard Taysom say he did use this pad and he still is able to keep under a 10 pound base weight, which is incredible. Um, but at 1.88 pounds, I mean, on the long and wide that is, um, that's a little bit on the heavier side. And then on the regular size, you're about 1.4 uh, pounds on this pad. So that for me is a little bit on the heavier side. Um, but again, there's not a lot of cons really so far that I've found on this pad. I, again, I don't have a lot of money out there to be testing all kinds of stuff. But so far, um, when it comes to weight, it wasn't even a huge deal for me. Um, I do not have a 10 pound base weight. I have a framed pack, uh, that is just not me. Um, so for me, this weight definitely represents kind of who I am as a backpacker um, for me personally, and I will take this pad um, due to that. So let's get into another con. For me, it's interesting. I think it's kind of noisy. I really feel like it's a little noisy. Um, there's always going to be noise in every single pad you go into, but this one is a little noisy and I think I know why because I do use a top quilt. So there is a little bit more, um, not as much cushion when it comes to under my sleeping bag because I don't use a sleeping bag obviously. So I'm not sure if it would be different with the sleeping bag because you'd have a little bit of more cushion above you than your pad. But when I'm laying down on this thing, it is kind of noisy for me personally compared to my other ones. But it could also be the technology of this radiant reflection on top is definitely different because the Big Agnes Q Core Deluxe and the Nemo Tensor, the, it's a little bit, it's a softer um, type of feel on top where this is really feels like a nylon, really. It feels like just like this, this plastic type, which makes it probably a little bit more loud. So I don't know if you can kind of hear it, but 
that is another uh, downfall. It's not a huge deal. Um, I would like it to be a little bit more quieter, to be honest, personally, but it's not the end of the world um, for me. So, all right, let's get into another con. I don't, I personally don't understand it, um, but the blow up valve is on the back of the pad. So if I'm laying down and I want to release some air, I've got to like go on my stomach, lift this thing up, pop it out and release some air out of it. So I don't fully understand. Um, and there has to be a reason why they felt like this was the best place to do it. I did experience some air leaving the pad. And I is I moved the pad somehow and it hit this portion of it and I believe it just came off somehow and started leaking because it was completely flat. So I had to get up in the middle of the night and uh, and blow it up. I don't think I blew it up all the way because it's definitely not, um, that's the ground, it's definitely not blown up enough, but it was enough for me to at least sleep a little bit. So, so far so good though, enjoyed it. Straps held up nice. Maybe it's because they wanted to have it out of your face or out of, you know, if you're rolling your head around, that could be it too. So I'm not too sure the reason behind it, but that's just a small little con. It's not the end of the world, but it's a small little con for me. Lastly, I want to be 100% transparent and honest, okay? I don't want to steer anybody wrong. The one downfall that I have had with outdoor vitals, because I am a fan of outdoor vitals. I have multiple things from outdoor vitals. I wanted to exchange, I wanted to return this pad originally, not because it wasn't comfortable, because again, it was a little bit too noisy for me and I wasn't expecting that kind of noise. Um, and I was a little concerned that air leaked out. This was after my first time using it. I took it out after that, but I was a little concerned. So I did reach out to Outdoor Vitals. I must've been a customer service rep and they really did not give me any options whatsoever to help me out. They said, we, you can return it and we'll give you, you know, 75% of the value at store credit. And I get it. Outdoor Vitals is, is not as big as some of the other big name companies. Um, so I, I understand um, to a certain point, but I just wanted to be very clear and transparent. If you read their information after purchase, it's not just, I took it out. I didn't like it. Return it. They do not operate like that. And I get it. They are a smaller company, but amazing equipment. I, again, um, amazing, outdoor vital, amazing. I have their, their, I have multiple things of them. I'm not saying bad about the company, but when it came to the pad, I did try to return it originally and I got a lot of pushback to the point where I said, I never want to buy anything from you guys ever again. I cooled off a little bit. I was still very nice on my email, but I just want to be transparent. So if you are going to use this, if you are going to buy this pad, I recommend do not take it out try it at home, see how you like it, and then just be aware that you may have to get store credit if you don't like it. I think I'm, I wanted to be transparent and honest uh, with you guys about that. That's the only bad experience I've ever had with Outdoor Vitals. Um, so other than that though, I really like the pad. I heavily recommend the pad. If you're looking at me saying, Mike, I have $115 to buy a pad, would you recommend this Outdoor Vital Oblivion pad? And without a thought, I would say yes, I do recommend the pad. If your sleeping ha habits are like mine, if your body structure is like mine, and if you know this is the pad for you. Um, so without further ado, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, like, subscribe, please. And when someone asks you to get outdoors and go backpacking, you say, yes, we can. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.